Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? I hope uh, you're feeling good. You're feeling rested this um, Sunday. Hope you've had a good week at school and the various things you're doing. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Lloyd. I'm a youth worker at Rudgwick Church in Rudgwick, West Sussex. And this video is a little Bible study uh, for our youth group at the church. We're a Christian youth group called Engage. Uh, this Bible study is for ages 10 to 14 or so. We're, we're really glad that you're with us, uh, whether you're with us for the first time or you're used to doing this most weeks. You get a real surprise and a real treat next week. Someone else is going to lead this group. Um, some of you will remember our friend Ian, who used to come out to the group with us when we were able to meet in person, and Ian is going to do the video next week. So you're really going to want to uh, watch next week because you get to see uh, someone else other than me and hear someone else's voice other than mine. Well, this week um, we are on our last uh, week in the series of choosing right? We've been talking about choices. What do we choose? And this week, we're doing the final one, and it's quite important. It's a big one. The choice is, who controls you? And how do you choose who or what controls you? Really powerful stuff. Now, I want you to think for a moment. How many of you have something at home that uses a remote control? Probably a television or if any of you have like a, a game controller, Xbox or PlayStation or something. Or do you have a toy, a remote control car or a drone or something that uses a remote control? Uh, just think about the television for a moment. You can uh, just by touching a button, you can change the channels. You can change the volume, make it louder or softer just by pressing a button. Now I want us to read... If you've got your Bible, um, we're going to turn to the book of 1 John, chapter 5. And 1 John, there's three letters of John towards the, towards the very end of the Bible. 1, 2, and 3 John. Not the Gospel of John. So you're going to be way at the back of your Bible. So like, for instance, for me, it's right back here. And just as a reminder, if you're not sure where a book in the Bible is, you can use your table of contents. So... Uh, if you need a little bit more time, you can pause the video until you catch it. But we're going to read 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 together. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Wait, what? The world is under the control of who? That's a bit weird. So on your book there, on your worksheets... Just fill in that blank. Who controls the world? Well, don't worry. We'll unpack a little bit of what we mean by that. Well, the Bible says that the evil one controls the world. Now, we know the world and the universe and everything in it belongs to God. And ultimately, God is the final authority. But this world and the way people act and all that kind of thing are kind of un under control of the evil one. Do you see what I mean? And he does this in different ways. He controls things in different ways. One of the ways that he controls this world is by making us afraid. And particularly what he likes, he loves for us to be afraid of, is what other people think. Just pause there for a moment and think, have you ever been worried about doing something or saying something just because you're not sure what other people will think of you? We talked about this a week or two ago, didn't we? Making choices based on what other people think. So uh, now go back to your Bible. Turn back quite a few pages to the Gospel of Matthew. So I'm going to go way back here. Keep going. Keep going to the Gospel. Oh, I've gone too far. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. And again, if you're not sure where that is, just have a look at your table of contents in your Bible. It's normally at the front of your Bible. We're going to read a few verses here. This is a story. Some of you might remember this story. This is the story of Peter, who was one of the 12 disciples or 12 apostles. And Peter was asked by some people, do you know Jesus? And let's see what happens. I'm, I'm going to read it out loud, but you can follow along with me. 
Matthew chapter 26, beginning with verse 69. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But, listen to what Peter did, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. See, he's starting to get angry now, isn't he? After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus has spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Now, this is quite a sad story, isn't it? Jesus, who had, uh, sorry, Peter, who had been with Jesus for three years of his life, seen Jesus do lots of powerful things. He's done some amazing things with Jesus. But now when the pressure's on, Peter gets a little bit something. How do you think he feels? Why did Peter say that he did not know Jesus? Now, we're in page 39 of your worksheets. Why did Peter say that he did not know Jesus? Have a think about it. Do you think he was afraid? Do you think maybe he was embarrassed? Now, bear in mind, let's give Peter a little credit because Jesus actually has been arrested now, hasn't he? For um, saying, you know, teaching people about God and uh, and doing all these kinds of things. And Peter now is maybe worried, are they going to arrest me too? Is he afraid? Is he embarrassed? Have you ever felt embarrassed about your Christian beliefs? Have you ever felt afraid of what someone might say or do? I have to admit, when I was younger, probably there were moments when I did. I don't think I was afraid that anyone would arrest me or even hurt me. I just maybe was afraid they were going to laugh at me. Have you ever felt that way? Um, fortunately, if you keep living for Jesus, keep walking with Christ, uh, you can learn to get through that and not, not be embarrassed about Christianity anymore. But you see, what Peter had done is he let Satan control his thoughts and feelings. And so Peter made the wrong choice and said the wrong thing. Now, if you want to turn your page to the top of page 40, Peter let Satan control his thoughts, in other words, his mind, his choice, in other words, his will, and his feelings or his emotions. Now, what does that remind you of that we've talked about? some time ago, his mind, will, and emotions. So that affected Peter's what? It begins with an S. His soul. Do you remember that? Your mind, will, and emotions is your soul. And that's the invisible part of us, isn't it? Peter thought more of the opinion of the crowd than he did of Jesus. He was frightened by the people in the crowd. Now, why don't you take a minute now, you can pause the video and come back to it, but why don't you take a moment to draw a picture of this? What do you think Peter's face looked like while people were asking him, do you know Jesus? What do you think the crowd looked like? Could you draw some of that scene? All right, if you want to pause the video and finish your drawing, now would be a good time to do that. Okay, welcome back. I really like to see your drawings if you don't mind sharing them. Uh, if you send one of those through to me, scan it through or post it through my door, then I'd love to give you a chocolate uh, or a sweetie later on. Are there things that you are frightened of? If so, is that a way to give the devil a little bit of control of our lives? Um, what are the things that we're afraid of? Now, some of you might think, you know, things like spiders and snakes. And and um, those are certainly things that some people are afraid of. I used to be afraid of uh, spiders. 
when I was young. In fact, I've got a really embarrassing story about that that I'm not going to put on the church website. But if you want to hear my really embarrassing story about being scared of spiders, come and ask me sometime and I'll tell you. But um, what are other things that we're afraid of? Are we afraid of that people are going to laugh at us? Are we afraid that if we do the right thing, uh, somebody's not going to be our friend or something like that? What are some, some, some of those things that we can pray about together? And here's another way to think about it. Who do you want to control your life? Who do you want in charge of you? When I ask myself, who do I want to be in charge of Lloyd? I know the answer for me is Jesus. So on the next, te- next page, there's two, two pictures, two names. I want you to think about it. Who do you want to control your life? Satan, the kingdom of the world, or Jesus and the kingdom of God? And I want you to color in the picture of the name that you want to control you and the one that you don't want to control you. Just put a big black X through it. Yeah? And if you want to pause the video and do that now, you can. Otherwise, you can do that as you're listening, or you can come back to it later after we finish the rest of the video. Again, if you've you know drawn a, a colored in a picture that you're really um, proud of, I would love to see it if you're willing to share it. Okay, let's turn to page 42 and do our memory verse together. Remember, you still have time to send in last week's memory verse, but I need to have it in the next day or two. Last week's memory verse is Ephesians 4, 32. So have a look at that if you haven't done it yet. Okay, this week's memory verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. I don't want to say the word lavished. That's not a word we use very often, but we know what it means. It's just to, to give out generously do you know when right now in uh, coronavirus we're meant to wash our hands really thoroughly and you use it you get a big dollop of soap and you rub it all into your hands that's what we mean kind of by lavish it's just you, you use loads of it so let's say this verse together again with that in mind thinking about how generous god is with his love you ready how great is the love the father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. Wonderful. And I'm certain that you can, uh, with a little bit of effort, memorize that. So more sharing together. There's something you could do a bit later on your own or with your mom or dad or someone in your family. Ask your special friend to tell you about the things they were frightened of as a child, but are no longer frightened of. Now I said earlier, I've got a embarrassing story about spiders, but you know what? The good thing is I'm not really afraid of spiders anymore. Um, I'm quite happy to pick them up in my hand and take them outside if I've got one in the house, usually, unless it's a really um, funny looking one, and then I might not. But normally, I'm not, I don't have a problem with spiders anymore. Ask your special friend, what were they frightened of when they were little? Um, second one, this is a really, sounds like a really fun activity. Get some balloons, blow some balloons up. Both of you write things on them that you were afraid of. Now, be careful when you do this. Don't use a regular pen or pencil. You probably want a marker pen, soft tip pen. Yeah. And then after you've written some things you're afraid on, take them outside and burst the balloons in turn saying, thank you, Jesus, that I could be free from whatever it is. And say the thing that is written on the balloon. Then give a big clap together as the last one is burst. That sounds like something really fun. I wish we could be together as a group because we might try that together as a group. Um, on that note, I just want to say a few things. You know, just want to, to, re- to remind you guys, really, that we're here for you. Is there something I can pray with you about? If so, drop me an email or send me a text. Get your parents' help. Get in touch with me. Um, is there something else that you need? Um, do you need food? Do you need, you know, anything, really? Get in touch. We would love to help if we can. Okay, there's a couple of other pages that I'm sending you that we won't go through now in the worksheets of some things for you to follow up with. Um, As I said, be sure to tune in next week because Ian is going to be leading us in our Bible study and you won't want to miss that. For now, um, why don't we pray? 
Father, thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And um, Lord, we're thankful that uh, we don't have to be afraid because you've just given us your love so freely and generously. You've lavished it on us. Pray that you'd help us all to walk this week with you, knowing you, loving you, serving you, and being um, being proud, being um, joyful to tell people, yeah, I'm a Christian. I do know Jesus and not being afraid like Peter was. And give us your Holy Spirit that we might uh, live that out more boldly and freely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lovely to be with you all and hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.